Esteemed delegates, welcome. We will start the session in five minutes. And as you may have noticed, the live has started on YouTube. Distinguished delegates, I think we may start the fifth session. So welcome to this fifth and last session of our committee. Uh, you all have worked very hard to be able to present today your draft resolutions uh, to the assembly. And the council is moved to have seen such outstanding performances and collaboration to reach such a goal. And we have received six draft resolutions, which will be discussed and voted upon in this session. Uh, dear delegations, today is the last blow that shall strike down the absence of a legal framework regulating the use of space resources. Uh, it will thus illustrate the global cooperation of the world's nation uh, and uh, 
demonstrate that when driven by the will to maintain peace and foster a better future, we can do great things. The Council remains dedicated to the discussion, modification and adoption of this future first resolution, which will ensure the basis laid by the Outer Space Treaty 55 years ago regarding the peaceful uses of outer space remain stable. As such, we will do our best to accommodate the adoption of such resolution by the end of the session. Following our interested philosophy, the consensus basis will be our uh, lead. I now declare this fifth committee session opened and as such, we'll now proceed with the roll call should the rapporteur share the screen to do so. Thank you, Mrs. Rapporteur. Right, so starting with the delegation of Australia. Present and voting. Awesome, followed by the delegation of Belgium. Present and voting. The one of Brazil. Present and voting. The one of Canada, which is absent. Uh, the one of Chile. The delegation of Chile is present and voting. Awesome, followed by the one of China. Present and voting. Okay, the delegation of the Czech Republic. Uh, present and voting. Awesome. The delegation of Egypt. Considered absent. The delegation of Finland. Present and voting. The delegation of France. Yes, present and voting. Perfect. The delegation of Germany. Present and voting. Okay. The delegation of India. Present and voting. Delegation of Indonesia. Present and voting. The one of Iran. Present and voting. The one of Israel, which is absent. The delegation of Italy. Present and voting. The delegation of Japan. Present and voting. The delegation of the Republic of Korea. Present and voting. Delegation of Luxembourg. Yes, the Grand Duchy of Luxembourg is present and voting. Awesome. The delegation of Mexico. Present and voting. The delegation of the Netherlands. Present and voting. Uh, the delegation of Nigeria. Present and voting. The delegation of the, of, uh, the Russian Federation. Present and voting. The delegation of South Africa. Considered absent. The delegation of the United Arab Emirates. Present and voting. Uh, the delegation of the United Kingdom. Present and voting. Followed by the delegation of Ukraine. Present and voting. The delegation of the United States of America. Present and voting. And finally, the delegation of Venezuela. Present and voting. Perfect. We are mostly all present to start this last session. Uh, to do so, I will now proceed with the opening of the session. And to do so, I would require any delegates to motion for the resume, uh, for resuming the debate. Yes, delegation of Finland. The delegation of Finland motions to open the debates and uh, the motion and the discussion of the chair directly passes. So the debate may now restart. Uh, we shall firstly address the general speakers list. Should there be any last speeches uh, before we may start the session? And we shall start with where we last uh, stand last time. Uh, which will thus be the Republic of Korea. Republic of Korea, the floor is yours for 90 seconds. I would like to pose a point of information to the chair. 
Yes. I was the last first speaker for the previous session again. I was the first speaker, I mean. Am I starting again as the first speaker this time again? Yeah, it might be that the document is not up to date. Um, a few seconds while addressing the issue. A point of information, uh, the UAE were the last one to talk uh, last time. So I think the list starts at Belgium, then the UAE, then the Netherlands, etc. Okay. Thank you very much. Let me check right now. Yes, it is in fact the case. Um, we will then start with the United Arab Emirates, and the floor is yours for 90 seconds. Thank you. Uh, I think Belgium is before me. Is it? Right. In that case... All right. The floor is yours, Belgium, for 90 seconds. Sorry again for the mistake. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, for the floor. The delegation of Belgium is very happy to have uh, reached uh, 10 signatories with the co-sponsors of India, Russia, and uh, China. And we would like uh, to thank our signatories personally, specifically the delegations of Brazil, Chile, the Czech Republic, Indonesia, Iran, Korea, Mexico, the Netherlands, Nigeria, South Africa, and Venezuela for their input and support and for en enabling us to open the debate on the establishment of an international space, resource, uh, space authority. Um, the rest of the draft resolution will be presented at a later time during the sessions. And uh, we sincerely hope we will be able to reach consensus, both with uh, Belgium's European allies, but also other allies we have bilateral cooperation agreements with, including the United Arab Emirates and um, Mexico as well. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, delegation of Belgium. Delegation of the U UAE, the floor is yours for 90 seconds. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, fellow delegates. Uh, the delegation of the United Arab Emirates would like to thank everybody for the enthusiastic cooperation on the four papers the UAE is sponsoring or supporting. Uh, regarding today's topic, the UAE would uh, like to remind all delegations that today the main goals are the karmas. Uh, we don't have to settle on, on the very specific details, even if it would be preferable. Uh, if we can, we have to focus on passing a resolution that addresses the, karma, the karmas as best as possible. And I will put them um, in the chat so that everybody can see them again. Thank you very much. Will you yield your time to the chat questions or any delegates? I would like to yield my time to Luxembourg if Luxembourg wants it. Luxembourg, the time is yours for 51 seconds, should you like to make a statement? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This delegation is likely to be, is, is very happy to be here on this fourth day of this conference. We're also happy to announce that we have been the sponsors of one draft resolution sent to the chairs on the legal framework covering matters on space resources, as well as signatories to other three draft resolutions on the topics of sustainability, harmful interference and international temporary utilization zones. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much for your time. Um, delegation of the Netherlands, the floor is now, is, is now yours for 90 seconds. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The delegation of the Netherlands would like to thank all delegations for the constructive talks in the last days and looks forward to further discussing the draft resolutions. But first, the Netherlands would like to reaffirm that it believes this committee can reach consensus on the designation of an existing body or the establishment of a new one as an international space authority. However, we believe it best for this committee to discuss the mandate and competences that should be given to this authority before moving on to the draft resolutions. We would therefore like to propose that such an authority as part of a new legal framework will be initially entrusted with four following general tasks. The first one being the setting the safety and sustainability standards for space resource activities. The second one being running a notification and monitoring system for both public and private space actors. Third, establishing a capital investment instrument on the win-win principle, enabling capacity building for emerging space actors and stimulating private investment in the global space sector. 
And fourth, promoting a single interpretation of the Outer Space Treaty across state members and work towards consensus on relevant terminology. The Netherlands urges the distinguished representatives to reflect upon these four proposed tasks and to consider in what manner mandating these four tasks to an international space authority would be satisfactory to them. The goal of this discussion should be to make sure that states' concerns over sovereignty and the interests of private space actors are respected while establishing a true international regime for space resource activities. Thank you. Thank you very much, Delegation of the Netherlands, for this clear speech. Uh, before I before the chair asks all delegations if there are any motions on the floor, I would like to propose the delegations that would like to be added on the general speakers list to raise their hands before we move on with the formal debate. Yes, delegation of the Czech Republic, as well as the one of China. Thank you very much. Delegation of the Czech Republic, the floor is yours for 90 seconds. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to thank our sponsors to the uh, paper of the harmful contamination. Uh, so far, we've got uh, 20 signatories and um, four sponsors. And uh, I, I would like to urge those countries that have not yet uh, been signatories, if they have any concern to reach the Czech Republic, we are, will, we are actually willing to hear their concerns so that we can actually have a good and a good uh, definition that who can be used and can be adopted and so that it can save the future generation thank you very much thank you very much delegation of the czech republic the delegation of china uh, the floor is now yours for 90 seconds thank you chair building on a statement of the delegation from belgium China wishes to express its gratitude to its co-sponsors, Belgium, Russia, and India, and the following signatories. Before we proceed to discussing the draft resolutions, China wishes to reiterate that all countries here in this session, being state parties to the Outer Space Treaty, are bound to explore and use outer space only for the benefit and in the interest of all countries and for peaceful purposes only. China has always opened areas of the space sector to private and commercial actors and has increased its policy support since then, with provinces and cities seeking to attract what are likely to be hundreds of new high-end space companies to drive local innovation and growth. However, the issue before us today is not only to encourage commercial space activities and to allow spacefaring countries to become even more spacefaring. The issue before all the countries here today is to reach a consensus to seek a delicate balance between encouraging space activities and encouraging and ensuring equitable distribution to less developed countries. Therefore, China and its co-sponsors stress that there is a need to establish an independent body that is impartial and inclusive like the International Space Resources Authority. Thank you. Thank you very much, delegation of China. Uh, we shall now proceed with the formal debates, and to do so, uh, the chair would advise, would question if there are any motions on the floor uh, regarding the presentation specifically of draft resolutions, so that we may have all the time to review all of them. Yes, delegation of the Netherlands, as well as the Thank you, Mr. Chair. No, oh, sorry. No, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, uh, the delegation of the Netherlands would like to first move for a moderate caucus of 20 minutes uh, with 19 seconds speaking time each on reaching consensus on the designation or establishment of an international space authority. Is it the proposal of presentation of a draft resolution or is it a moderated caucus without any? No, it's a moderate caucus separate from the draft resolutions. Right, thank you very much. The delegation of Italy. Yes, thank you, Chair. The delegation of Italy would like to move for a 20 minutes moderated caucus uh, with 30 seconds speaking time to present the newly uh, presented draft re resolutions. Thank you very much. Uh, delegation of Luxembourg. Thank you, Chair. 
the delegation of Luxembourg would also like to move for a motion to present a draft resolution that has already been sent to the chairs for 20 minutes, one minute time per speaker on the topic of uh, a, a new legal framework, which is part of the draft resolution, of course. Right. Thank you very much, delegation of Luxembourg, delegation of the UAE. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the UAE would like to append a moderated caucus uh, that it would last uh, 20 minutes with, with um, 70 seconds per person, um, like one minute and 10 seconds. And it would be on the subject of um, the creation of international temporary utilization zones. In the context of presenting a draft resolution or? Uh, it's a draft resolution that has been sent to the chair beforehand. Right. Thank you very much, delegation of China. Thank you, Chair, for recognizing China. China wishes to propose a moderated caucus with a total speaking time of 20 minutes with two minutes speaking time each on the proposal on the introduction of China's a uh, draft resolution co-sponsored with Belgium, Russia, and India that has already been sent to the chair. Thank you very much. Uh, delegation of Venezuela. Thank you, Chair. I would like to add with the delegation of Netherlands reaching the organization uh, with the Netherlands, I would like to add the accountability of the international uh, rule and the regulation as part of part of the Netherlands recommendation. Thank you. Which motion are you requiring? It's part of, uh, we are the same, we are in the same working paper with Netherlands. So Reaching uh, consensus of the international body. <laughs> if I understood correctly, the delegation of the Netherlands did not require for an introduction of a draft resolution. If I am not mistaken, the delegation of the Netherlands could could you clarify? Sorry, clarify uh, the, the objective of your moderated caucus. Yes, that's uh, correct, Mr. Chair. Um, the objective is to reach consensus on the designation or establishment of an international space authority, uh, but this is separate from the draft resolutions introduced. Thank you very much. Um, in that case, I would first disregard now the uh, motion from the delegation of the Venezuela. Would it? Uh, it's part of that. Right. But in the context of presenting a draft resolution? Uh, uh, no. Okay. Um, yes, I guess this possible. Should the delegation of the Netherlands agree? Um, I'm sorry. What do you want me to agree on? Uh, the delegation of the Venezuela would like to add a topic to complement the one you propose for your moderated caucus. Um, yes, uh, that's uh, that's okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Because uh, he's the uh, Netherlands is adding establishment of an uh, international body. Obviously, there's going to be accountability and uh, accountability with it. Thank you. Right. Thank you. A delegation of the Czech Republic, would you motion for something? Yes, I want to motion for the definition of harmful contamination for moderated caucus for each speaker uh, 60 seconds and the total time 10 minutes. Okay. Uh, in the context of presenting a draft resolution, am I, am I not mistaken? Uh, that's correct, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, the delegation of Chile, I see that you raised your hand. Yes, uh, it's uh, the region of Chile wants uh, to propose a moderated caucus of 20 minutes, one minute for each speaker, about introduction to the uh, deal. So I'll write your solution. Thank you very much, delegation of Chile. Thank you. Um, considering we currently have two hours of moderated caucus, it might not be uh, feasible to uh, handle all, th all these motions while still having time for voting at the end of the committee session. I would thus, to the discretion of the chair, eventually reduce all the times that were proposed during the session. Um, and we shall start, however, 
not with the Netherlands moderated caucus, as it is not a draft resolution and thus maybe not uh, that currently urgent. The delegation of the Netherlands, would you clarify if this moderated caucus will serve potentially the improvement of a draft resolution for the current session? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, I believe it will improve the discussion of the draft resolutions, especially the one uh, sent by China AL. Thank you very much. In that case, I would reduce the corresponding time to eight minutes with 45 seconds each speaker, if that's acceptable for you. Of course, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, we would thus start with this moderated caucus on the delegation proposed by the delegation of the Netherlands on reaching consensus of designation and establishment uh, of the rest. I would thus propose delegation of the Venezuela. Yes, do you have a motion to propose? Uh, no. Okay. Oh, could you, would you mind please uh, stopping raise the raise and feature? Thank you. Thank you very much. In that case, I would propose. Uh, speakers that wishes to speak in the moderated caucus of the Netherlands to now raise their hand. Yes, delegation of the Luxembourg, Belgium. Uh, point of order. Yes. Could the chair please ask the House if there are any objections to the motion? It is possible. Yes, the chair would now ask if there is any objection to the motion proposed by the Netherlands on um, a moderated caucus. Delegation of the USA. Thank you. The delegation of the USA wishes to oppose this motion on the grounds, firstly, that this subject has already been substantially debated, and secondly, that there are two draft resolutions prior submitted to the chair, which do address this issue, so it will have additional substantial moderated debate today. Thank you. Luxembourg would like to second this objection. The UAE seconds that too. <laughs> Thank you very much. In that case, I would have a debate of 30 seconds with one speaker against one speaker uh, for uh, Luxembourg and the USA, you uh, both have 30 seconds to explain yourselves regarding this question. And we will start with the delegation of the Netherlands. Shall they accept to um, defend their motion for 30 seconds? Delegation of the Netherlands, the floor is yours for 30 seconds. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The delegation of the Netherlands believes that this moderated caucus will help the discussion regarding the draft resolutions as no consensus has right now been reached on the International Space Authority. And we believe that discussing the general tasks mandated to such an authority uh, is helpful uh, and more helpful than uh, when during the discussion of the draft resolutions amendments are introduced. So we think we should tackle this uh, problem first and then move on to the draft resolution. Thank you. Thank you very much. Delegation of the USA, the floor is yours for 30 seconds to answer the delegation of the Netherlands. Thank you. We believe that because there are draft resolutions from countries with differing perspectives on this topic, that allowing this conversation to happen in those two draft resolution moderated caucuses will actually allow for more exposure of ideas and more deliberation across the entire committee. We also think that the delegation of the Netherlands goal of deciding more specific details about what such a body would do at this time during the committee meeting is contrary to consensus building because the more specificity we receive in ideas the less consensus we've been getting this weekend. Thank you very much, delegation of the USA. Having heard both delegations, the chair agrees that it would be uh, more substantial to tackle the considered topic while whilst presenting the draft resolution afterwards and we'll then disregard for now this resolution for a moderated caucus on that specific topic and then move on to the second uh, motion which was proposed by if mrs rapporteur allows us to see on the left who proposed the second it was the delegation of italy thank you very much uh, delegation of italy I would reduce the time also for the introduction of the draft resolution to 10 minutes 
if possible, with a possible extension afterwards, in case it's not sufficient to present all the uh, considered topics. Are there any objections now to this uh, introduction to a draft resolution by the delegation of Italy? And in that case, the motion directly passes a delegation of Italy. Uh, do you wish to have several speakers presenting the draft resolution? Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair. Before that, the uh, delegation of Italy sent a message to the Honorable Chair asking, if possible, to extend the speaking time to one minute. Maybe 45 seconds would be better, as we feel like 30 seconds is too short of a time. Definitely, the secretary definitely, definitely agrees with uh, such a proposal. Uh, it would then increase, increase the speaking time. Uh, however, do you wish to introduce the draft resolution before, yes. during a specific time? Um, if we may be allowed uh, three minutes to just present the draft resolutions and then use the time of the moderated caucus to answer any questions or maybe even read it further. That in, that, in this case, I would advise for a three minutes presentation, uh, moderated caucus for the introduction of the draft resolution, uh, eventually followed by a motion for a QA and a uh, of 10 minutes afterwards. Okay, that's fine for the delegation. Awesome, thank you very much. Delegation of the Czech Republic, do you have a remark to make? Yes, a uh, point of information, uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes. I propose 10 minutes. Uh, I think you can reduce to five minutes since I've got uh, 20 signatories. So maybe just a few signatories that have not signed to uh, to the definition of, uh, of, uh, of harmful interference can be given an opportunity to raise their concern. Thank you. Uh, I said you can reduce to five minutes. You can reduce to five minutes. I'd propose 10 yes. minutes. So Thank reduce you. to Thank five minutes. Much. Each timing will be redressed uh, uh, as the committee session moves forward. Delegation of the Czech, uh, Republic of Chile before we move forward because time is running short. Yes, thank you. It's for remove our motion because it's uh, to in, improve for Italy. Thank you very much. Okay. The remove the motion of Chile is then withdrawn from the list and we shall now proceed with the delegation of Italy to present the draft resolution. Do you wish delegation of Italy that the rapporteur shares uh, the corresponding draft resolution? Yes, please. Thank you. That would be the draft resolution on sustainability, information sharing, and technology. Thank you very much, Mrs. Rapporteur. Would you mind starting the timer as soon as the delegation of Italy is ready to start presenting its draft resolution? Thank you very much. Delegation uh, of Italy, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair. I would like to first leave the floor to Japan um, as uh, the delegation of Japan will tackle the preamble and then we'll move on from there. Thank you. Thank you, Italy. Honorable Chair, distinguished delegates, the delegation of Chile, Italy, and Japan are delighted to present your, to you our draft resolution on sustainability, information sharing, and technology. We encourage fellow delegates to make friendly amendments to this paper. We believe that these points represent priorities for all states, and we hope it represents a common ground. This draft, this draft resolution is concerned by the sustainability of space resource extraction activities, including the potential creation of space debris, and the need for regulation to clean up after mining operations. Sustainability is a paramount and necessary coordination in space, uh, is paramount and necessary for coordination in space mining activities. And we'll once again, we encourage countries to give its utmost priority. This draft is also concerned by the access to information related to activities, but also technologies that are important for the benefit of mankind. This is why this, thesis, uh, this draft also encompasses the idea of ensuring access to technology and information, especially for emerging space countries. This solution this resolution takes into account information and technologies also for private and public actors. I will leave my time to Chile, uh, to uh, Italy, sorry. 
Thank you, Japan, uh, Honorable Chair, Madam Vice Chair, distinguished guests. As previously stated by the delegation of Japan, this draft resolution is aimed at promoting an interdisciplinary approach like ISRU, which would bring into play different sectors that do not necessarily directly operate in space and that are not able to provide advanced technological solutions just yet. On top of this, this draft resolution encourages a peaceful cooperation among um, operating space actors, which we think is key to achieving and ensuring that space activities are carried out for the benefit and interests of all states. The promotion of an exchange of best practices within state, public, private, or other operation providing um, and, en and enabling the necessary framework for sustainability of resource ex extraction and mining beyond the Earth atmosphere uh, would also provide the basis for fair and equitable use of space with um, an operating model to collaborate and integrate developed and developing and also newly emerging states to have a voice despite varying technologies, uh, technology level and readiness and also um, with all outcomes to be distributed on a fair, again, and equitable manner. Um, it is now the Italian delegation's pleasure to leave the floor to the delegation of Chile, who will further present this draft. Thank you for the floor, delegation of Italy. Honorable chairs, distinguished delegates, the delegation of Chile, Italy, and Japan, in a joint effort based on the search for an equitable and universal distribution of the benefits generated by space activities, have reached the following consensus. Uh, safeguarding of the private sector in Article 8, giving it an important role in the technological development of the countries, and also a networking of space agencies. Considering the importance of such a presentation, uh, the chair would advise for an extension of two minutes to allow the uh, sponsors to finish presenting the draft resolution, if possible. Uh, thank you very much, Mrs. Rapporteur. Republic of Chile, you may move forward. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. So, of which um, have reached the following consensus, of which we would like to point out uh, so much the safeguarding of the private sector, as mentioned in Article 8, we need an important role in the technological development of emerging countries. The same article also pro proposed the protection and encourage the police sector seeking to generate technology, promotion networks, and a network of international space agencies. Also, in Article 11, we urge a safe, fair, and equitable transfer of knowledge in order to preserve the environment for the future generation. Similarly, we request the joint development of technology in working groups. Proof the support of developed countries, support that will allow us to achieve a common technological base base as I mentioned in our last two articles, 12 and 13. Anyway, that is all the solutions for an emerging country that represent Chile. Thank you so much for the time. Thank you very much, delegation of Italy, Japan and Republic of Chile. Uh, we shall now enter if a delegate uh, would be so kind as to motion for a Q&A uh, we would enter a Q&A session for a few minutes. Yes, delegation of Italy. The uh, delegation of Italy would like to move for a Q&A session of the duration of um, five minutes. Would that be uh, appropriate amount of time? It would be definitely agreeable, potentially with uh, an option for an extension should the answers not be satisfactory at the end of the five minutes. Uh, we would now proceed with the delegation that would like to ask questions regarding these draft resolutions. Uh, please raise your hands so that I may recognize you. Uh, considering also that the five minutes will be an answer, an answering, sorry, uh, speaking time. So we would not take into account the questions. Delegations, if you, wishes, if you wish to uh, ask any question, please raise your hand. Will we reach a, a very fast consensus on this draft resolution? Potentially, we will see that afterwards. If there are no questions, and now is the time to speak, if so. 
we may then move forward with the second draft resolution presentation. Um, if Mrs. Uh, reporter would be so kind as to show us which motion is next, please. Thank you very much. Um, in that case, we would then move forward with the delegation of Luxembourg for uh, a new legal framework uh, regarding its draft resolution. Delegation of the Luxembourg, would you mind if the speaking time for the presentation was reduced to five minutes, potentially motion afterwards for the Q&A session? Absolutely, that's perfect. Thank you very much. In that case, moving the speaking time to five minutes. Um, and as soon as it is ready. Thank you very much. Um, would you mind reminding us which designation your draft resolution is? Yes, it is called a uh, legal framework draft resolution. 3.1, perfect. Yes, exactly. As soon as you are ready, the floor is yours and the timer should start. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Madam Vice Chair and distinguished delegates. As you can read out loud in the preamble, and I will do it so for you, the first preambulatory clause starts by saying, affirming the importance of the 1967 Arctic Space Treaty and its principle to guide all space activities in terms of ensuring a peaceful exploitation and use of outer space. This uh, preambulatory clause is the base for all this draft resolution. This delegation would like to point out the intention of the draft resolution. As all member states of the House can notice, it is based on the encouragement, recommendations, and proposal to be further discussed in the future and to agree on a more flexible legal framework. Clearly, agreeing on a more developed legal framework is the main topic we have not reached consensus upon in previous moderated and unmoderated caucuses. It is for this very reason that our sponsors and signatories are willing to agree on further conversations to take place and, at the very least, agree on future development to take place as well hoping that all members realize the importance of this, especially for emerging countries which have not had uh, such a strong voice in previous caucuses. Uh, thank you, Chair. This delegation would like to yield its resting time to the delegation of Germany if possible. Thank you, Delegation of Luxembourg, Honorable Chair, Madam Vice Chair, and fellow delegates. Germany and its co-sponsors proposes development of in an international legal framework based on long-term sustainable guidelines, where they provide guidance on the policy and regulatory framework, space activities, safety of space operations, international cooperation, capacity building and awareness, and of course, scientific and te technical research and development based on guidelines which are voluntary and non-legally binding under international law. They are formulated in a spirit of, of enhancing the practice of states and international organizations. Nothing in the guidelines states uh, be should be interpreted as a legal obligation for the states. And COPUS is a relevant body for implementing and review of the guidelines. So the international framework on space resources activities where states bear international responsibility for national space resources activities, whether carried out by government or non-governmental entities shall require prior authorization and continuous supervision by appropriate state. Also, it supports to the, to the development of a multilateral approach of a global space traffic management regime that focuses on the implementation of common international rules in which adapts to the continuing changes of the space sector, including the substantial issue of space de debris identification, management, and minimization. I would yield back my time to the delegation of Finland, if it's possible, maybe to write. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Delegation of Germany. The Delegation of Finland states the following. Thank you, Mr. Chair. First, I would like to take this <clears throat> sorry opportunity to mention our gratitude. Um, Mrs. Rapporteur, I am reading the statement of Finland. You may keep the timer going. Thank you. First, I would like to take this opportunity to mention our gratitude for our, your leadership during the meeting, Mr. Chair. That's very nice. And Madam Vice Chair, as well as thank the team for their support in organizing the meeting. Uh, you may also repeat those words at the end of the session. Uh, Mr. Chair and distinguished delegates, Finland is amongst other countries sponsor of the draft resolution which added common grounds regarding a comprehensive legal framework and which should be taken into consideration by all countries. Also regarding the prior motion uh, of the Netherlands, room for supervising body is open. Uh, the delegation of Finland uh, refers in this case to the ICAO, the International Civil Aviation Organization, an organization regulating issues regarding the air sector and could be uh, seen as an example of supervising body of a supervising body. However, we are now of this of the opinion that COPUS and its subcommittee, as well as the UNOSA, are for now enough to tackle the current issues. Furthermore, the delegation of Finland wants to add that an accountability body or judicial body is already given through the already existing International Court of Justice, who decides on whether principles of the Arch Space Treaty have been contravened with. Uh, contravened with and will decide if the hopefully future existing framework on space resources has been breached. Thank you very much. Considering the draft resolution has now been fully presented, uh, would the delegation be so kind as to motion for a Q&A session? Yes, absolutely. Motion for a Q&A uh, session by the delegation of Luxembourg. Okay, uh, how long would you like it to last? This delegation would like uh, would like it to be of five, ten minutes under discretion of the chair. Okay, in that case, um, moving forward with five minutes, potentially extendable in case of requirement. Uh, please, all, all the delegations that would like to ask a question, raise your hands. Yes, delegation of Belgium. And thank you, Mr. Chair. The delegation of Belgium has two so questions. Thank you very much, delegation of Belgium. If I may, uh, if it's possible to gather all the raised hands before we move forward with the corresponding questions, it's fine. Thank you very much. Uh, the delegation of the USA following the one of Belgium, the one of the Netherlands. Sorry, a few seconds. Belgium, USA. Uh, the Netherlands, Italy, Iran, and the UAE. Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Rapporteur. We shall then start with the delegation of Belgium. Ms. Delegation of Belgium, the floor is yours. Thank you for the floor, Mr. Chair. Uh, the delegation of Belgium has two specific questions. One, it's interested to hear more about the measures taken to incorporate developing countries and um, prevent discrimination uh, regarding space resources. And two, um, it's also interested to hear the views of the co-sponsors and the sponsors um, regarding why the current international body that's already in place uh, suffices given the recent news of the discovery by the Chinese ro um, moon, moon rover of the basis that was a worldwide shock. And we think there's a need for transparency and open communication. And this pressing issue does make it more pressing to create a new body and new legal framework. And we don't think the current one suffices, so we're very interested to hear the opinions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Delegation of Belgium, for this very accurate point. Uh, the floor is now to the Delegation of Luxembourg, should they like to answer the question? Absolutely. In terms of the first question, also if any of my colleague sponsors uh, wish to add to my, to my answer, they are very welcome to do so. Uh, in terms of your first question, to 
measures taken to incorporate developing countries and prevent discriminations. Uh, absolutely. One of our last clauses, which I believe was also shown on the screen, um, encourages for, a, for an implementation of a system of a possible majority, therefore including the possibility to uh, keep um, further talking and developing a new voting system that would also therefore listen to all the voices of both developed and developing countries. Um, in terms of the second question, upon views regarding why the current topic suffices and also including uh, recent events that have been uh, happening by Italy and the USA. As already stated, both by Italy and the USA, uh, they have been acting under national and also international law and especially being authorized both by the, the Italian space agency, NASA and ESA, therefore the European Space Agency, which indeed already means that there is no breach of the Outer Space Treaty. Um, additionally to this, uh, the information was already public on the previously mentioned uh, websites of these agencies. Therefore, again, there is no breach, which already means uh, this, um, the implementation of the already existing legal framework in uh, this committee is already enough. Uh, however, the delegation of Luxembourg is open to any further and more specific questions upon this matter, if uh, the, the delegation of Belgium is willing to explain a little further. Uh, however, we might not have the time to move more uh, longer on this, on this topic. I would leave the floor to the delegation of the United States of America for their question now. Uh, if possible, delegation of Luxembourg, uh, as we only have three minutes and still a few questions to uh, make the, the answer a bit shorter. If not, we would then uh, extend the time at the end of the Q&A. Uh, no issue in the matter. In the delegation of the USA, the floor is now yours for your question. Thank you. Thank you. Turning to the issue that has been raised multiple times during this conference, um, this committee meeting, around the question of a space authority, my understanding is that your proposed draft resolution would actually allow for parties who are interested in creating that kind of authority to do so. So interested states could create that authority if they wanted to, they could leave membership possibilities open to others who might come along the way in the coming years. Um, is that true? Would you just kind of verify for me that that's actually a freedom that is created by this draft resolution? Absolutely, thank you very much to the delegation of the USA. That is possible nowhere in this draft resolution. It says that we are prohibiting for the creation of this International Space Authority. We are only and merely not suggesting it especially for the sponsors and signatories to our draft resolution. And also, if I may add to the answer, actually, we uh, suggest implementing a lot of private sector for encourage and encouraging them also to join the exploitation and use of space resources. And uh, we leave this national leg legislation uh, to the sovereign state. Thank you very much, delegations of the Luxembourg and Germany, delegations of the Netherlands, sorry. The floor is yours for your question. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the delegation of the Netherlands thanks the sponsors for the draft resolution uh, and has four questions. Um, first, what does a multilateral approach to space traffic management entail and how does this differ from the current system run by UNUSA? Uh, second, to what extent is the legal framework based on the long-term sustainability guidelines binding uh, and are the Netherlands correct in interpreting this as a show of support for drafting a new UN space treaty? And third, uh, this delegation is concerned that the majority voting procedure mentioned in Article 7 may infringe upon the interests of emerging space actors. Could you sponsors elaborate on why they believe such a procedure is necessary? And the fourth question uh, is uh, not relevant. Thank you. Um, if it is possible, this delegation will light the delegation of the Netherlands to ask for first the first question, then the second, and then the third, because yes. different different people might uh, respond to different answers, if that's possible. So could it be done again? Thank you. If the chair allows it. Uh... Well, it's rules to reformulate your questions. Um, yes, uh, we might have to extend there afterwards. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, then the first question, uh, what does a multilateral approach to space traffic management entail and how does this differ from the current system run by UNUSA? 
So I believe this question might uh, be properly answered actually by the delegations of Germany and Finland. If uh, the delegation of Finland could be given a few minutes to uh, properly respond to this, probably by a written answer due to her cold. However, if Germany also wants to respond, that's uh, appreciated. Uh, I would like to add that space traffic management, it actually encompasses the means and the rules to assess, conduct activities in, so to go in and to come out from the outer space safely, sustainably and securely. This would envision the, uh, the complete control of what is going into the space and coming out of the, out of the space. So uh, like pre preventing space threats to happen. Maybe Finland it would like to add something. Should the message of Finland arrive a bit later, maybe we can move on to the next. Oh, perfect. So the delegation of Finland states the following. As the delegation of Finland explained earlier, the COP was suffices since we have a legal and technical subcommittee. And we also propose that discussions are open to give executive rights to the already existing UN body, UNOSA, which makes an additional body for now redundant and a waste of resources. However, implementing a supervising body like the ICAO is a possibility. And we also add that the legal framework should be developed on the basis of the LTS guidelines, which is a framework about sustainability and could be an example to tackle the issue of space resources. Thank you. And then the, the second question, uh, are these guidelines then now binding and would this, uh, would this be under a new UN space treaty? Uh, no, this would we would like to reinforce the meaning of the already valid uh, outer space treaty, because uh, guidelines are now non legally binding instruments and then after national laws can take measures to include these guidelines into their own licensing system. So, like that they become legally binding. So now we have 21 LTS guidelines, which are soft law, and we suggest implementing them in the national leg legislation. But as we said, for drafting this uh, resolution, we were considering that every state should, uh, should uh, keep their sovereignty. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, delegation of the Netherlands, we might not have the time for the third question, and would thus move with the delegation of Italy uh, for its question. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Uh, being a signatory of this draft resolution, the delegation of Italy is happy to see this draft being presented and would like to ask whether or not um, the sponsors of this draft resolution see private and commercial activities taking place, thus um, enabling both the public and private sector to benefit from space resources, as stated by the previously presented draft resolution. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, uh, delegation of Italy. We absolutely agree with your question. The answer is yes. In fact, this delegation, as well as uh, Germany, Finland, and also Australia, which is a sponsor to our draft resolution, are all signatories to the previously um, presented draft resolution by the delegation of Italy and co-sponsors. Thank you. Thank you very much. If possible, Mrs. Rapporteur, I would like to increase uh, the Q&A time to for two minutes, sorry. If possible, to be able to take the two last questions from the delegations of Iran and the UAE, starting with the delegation of Iran. Delegation of Iran, the floor is yours. Thank, your you, honor Thank you, Honorable Chairman, uh, fellow delegates. Uh, although the question uh, that, that uh, this delegation wanted to ask has already been asked by the delegation of Belgium in re regarding the developing countries, um, we're, we're not uh, sure how do it will be possible, practically possible, for the developing countries to have access to monetary benefits uh, um, deriving from uh, exploiting the space resources. And also, when uh, the delegation of Luxembourg answered, um, it wasn't quite clear uh, the proposal. 
you vote as to explain that further. Thank you. I think we might have missed a few seconds at the end of your last question. Oh, sorry, should I repeat it? Yes, thank you. Um, I, we, must, we said that uh, the delegation of Luxembourg, uh, when uh, answered uh, the question uh, by Belgium, uh, said that they propose a, a way of new voting. I, I'm not, we're not quite sure if we understood this proposal uh, regarding the participation of uh, developing countries. If it is possible to explain it, explain it further. Is it clear now? Yes, perfect. Thank you very much. Thank Please, you. Luxembourg, if you would be so kind of to answer. Thank you. Absolutely. I will uh, start the answer and then leave time also for Germany and Finland if they want if they want to add something as well as Australia. So in terms of the first part for your question, um, the extent to which developing countries have access to uh, monetarization and benefits, we are not directly addressing this topic. In fact, we believe it, it has already been uh, um, introduced in the draft resolution presented by the People's Republic of China, Russian Federation, Belgium, and India. Therefore, it will be discussed further on uh, when their draft resolution is presented to the House. And in terms of the second question, so the participation, including this new system, I believe, of voting, um, this is a proposal for further talks to implement a new voting system which would therefore enable all um, emerging countries, so uh, including therefore developed and developing countries, to the talks in the whole house, in the whole committee. Thank you. Thank you very much for your answer. Uh, delegation of the United Arab Emirates, uh, the floor is yours for your question uh, before we, we finish this Q&A and move to the next motion. Uh, the delegation of the UAE question has already been answered. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, maybe if I may just add uh, uh, to the first two questions. Well, the international framework, um, we believe, it should be developed in the future about, mon about uh, mon monetary benefit sharing. We are still, we believe that we are still not at this point. Uh, state of developing international framework, but our aim is surely to include developing countries and to, to, to educate how, how, and to economically um, provide means in the future for developing this sector. Thank you very much. Uh, if the secretary has understood correctly, in that case, the corresponding topic is not tackled in the draft resolution, correct? The monetarization topic has not been tackled by our draft resolution. Nonetheless, it has by another draft resolution, which has been proposed by a motion already. Right. That's why we did we 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 did not think about monetary benefit sharing. Thank you very much. In that case, we would conclude this Q and A and move forward with the next motion proposed by the delegation of the UAE regarding the creation of an international tempor temporary utilization zone for space resources exploitation. Um, as it was done for the former draft resolution introduction, I would advise for a reduction of time uh, to five minutes, if it's acceptable for you, delegation of the UAE. Uh, yes, thank you. Perfect, thank you very much. We would then proceed with presenting the corresponding draft resolution, which is, if I am not mistaken, draft resolution. It's the creation of international temporary utilization zones. Yes, DR 4.1. Yes. Thank you very much. You're welcome.
moving forward with the presentation of the international of the draft resolution um as soon as you are ready delegation of the uae you may take the floor for a duration of five minutes along with your co-sponsors thank you <clears throat> honorable chair madam vice chair and fellow delegates the uae along with france and the usa proposes a draft in favor of the creation of international temporary utilization zones also referred as ISUT. It has been signed by 14 countries already, Australia, Brazil, Chile, Czech Republic, Finland, Germany, Italy, Japan, Indonesia, Korea, Luxembourg, Mexico, Ukraine, and the United Kingdom. And we would like to invite non-signatory con countries to join as it provides meaningful answers to CARMA's numbers number two and three. We believe that the creation of ISOTs would contribute to a solution to harmful interference while still protecting all non-appropriation principles, provided that a regime regulates activities while both private and national ones, thus avoiding interference. The reference treaty framing this would be the so sorry, the reference treaty framing these international temporary safety zones is the Montego Bay Convention, as it would be in accordance with the Outer Space Treaty, unlike the law of the sea. And I will let the delegation of France uh, explain furthermore. Yes, delegation of France, you, you do not have to raise your hand. Please take the floor. Thank you. Thank you, delegate of United Arab Emirates. So uh, just as she said, the delegation of France, the United Arab Emirates and the United States of America are pleased to present their document on the International Temporary Utilization Zone, which will have a legal regime aligned with that on international uh, law of the sea by reference to the United Nations Convention of Mont Montego Bay signed in 1982. So in international maritime zones, the text prohibits the appropriation of this maritime zone, but authorizes the exploitation of its fishery resources. And the same applies to safety zone and the regime proposed by the Arts Space Treaty would be similar to that established for the high seas. The international temporary utilization zones are therefore in line with the provision of the Arts Space Treaty on the tree free use of the space, Article 1 of the OST, and the principle of the non-appropriation article two of the OST. The establishment of this regime of international temporary utilization zone makes it possible to respect international space law and to create a secure legal framework for the exploitation of space resources. And I just want to add something that the, uh, a lot of countries of uh, Russia, Belgium, uh, China uh, has ratified it. So we think that it's a, it's a real a good uh, it's a it's a real good um, uh, legal framework. So thank you for st thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, delegation of France, delegation of the USA. Should you add something, please move move forward. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I just want to reaffirm that the United States is very pleased to be a sponsor of this draft resolution. And I wanna highlight a couple of things that my colleagues from the United Arab Emirates and France have mentioned. The first is that we strongly believe that this draft resolution by nature of being very specific to one issue um, addresses sufficiently the issue of non-appropriation and the perceived risk of over-appropriation that could have existed under other ideas that were uh, mooted during the debate in the last couple of days. We also believe that because of the basic legal framework that almost all of the countries present here today are signatories to the Montego Bay Convention of 1982, we've actually proposed something that is already proven to be workable rather than reinventing the wheel, as it were. And my final comment on this is around the naming of these um, international temporary utilization zones. Previously, we had been using the terminology safety zones. We had also mooted in casually in unmoderated caucuses some other titles. We've been working with many delegations around what to call these zones, but we settled on these four words because they specifically address the concerns that have been raised, and we believe they meaningfully address them, as is evident in our operative clauses about what the meaning of these safety zones, previously called, actually is. And so the word international, that specifically is a commitment on behalf of the sponsors, signatories, and the wording in the operative clauses of um, how we see this playing out, that any zone established is actually still accessible internationally to any state or any body. 
So whether that's commercial or private sector. We also believe the word temporary is incredibly important because it means someone cannot camp out, if I can use that casual language, and just sort of permanently de facto appropriate a plot of land. We also finally believe that utilization is important because it specifies that it is explicitly for the use of space mining resource exploration and extraction, not for any other purposes. And finally, zone, that draws geographical parameters around it. A person cannot claim the entire moon as a zone, for example. Thank you. Thank you very much, delegation of the USA, for this well-timed um, introduction. I would then advise, uh, the chair would then advise, sorry, for a Q&A session motion by the delegates that would see its fit, uh, followed by the recognition of the uh, delegation that would like to ask a question. Yes, delegation of the UAA, please. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the UAA would like to open um, the question time um, of five minutes, for five minutes, thank you. Thank you very much. So the five minutes are uh, recognized and we shall then move forward with delegation that would like to ask a question to the corresponding sponsors. Yes, delegation of Belgium, delegation of Indonesia, the Republic of Chile, the one of Luxembourg, as well as Finland. Thank you very much. We shall then start with the delegation of Belgium. The floor is now yours to ask your question. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair, for the floor. Uh, the delegation of Belgium thinks one important issue hasn't been addressed or tackled in this draft resolution, meaning the sustainability and durability. Um, how will exploitation will be prevented? How will there be insurance of clean, durable and safe mining? How will security be established? And most importantly, long term sustainability is a really important issue. Thank you. Thank you very much. You may you may answer sponsors of the draft resolution. Thank you. The delegation from the US is happy to answer this question. Um, in short, we have another draft resolution, and by we, I simply mean the committee at large has another draft resolution to consider about sustainability specifically. This draft resolution deals only with the geographical remit of a state or other body using a plot of celestial land. Uh, if the secretary may add a comment, does that mean that the two resolutions are complementary? Uh, I think I can speak for the sponsors on this draft resolution to say that we do believe the two resolutions are complementary, but I think it's just important to note that this resolution on international temporary utilization zones does not attempt to address sustainability. It simply, again, attempts to address how we should use and how we should agree on the temporary use specifically of a very specific geographic remit on celestial bodies, not necessarily on how we carry out the activities on that plot of land, but how we agree that the non-appropriation but physical placement of states and their equipment or entities and their equipment on land should be interpreted and that should be interpreted not as appropriation of any kind but as use so i hope that clarifies what we mean by use yes thank you very much uh dedication of italy do you have a point to make oh yes just a point of information as one of the sponsors of the draft resolution on sustainability they are indeed complementary so uh, the delegation of Italy would just like to confirm what the delegation of the USA has just stated. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, in the present case, they could maybe have merged uh, before the current session, but we, we might tackle that after uh, in the following remaining time of the session. Delegation of the Venezuela, do you have a, a point? Uh, maybe also? before a point of information. Uh, different draft resolution have been um, thought as a merged document, but uh, to be able to reach consensus, they have been presented as different resolution, so that uh, at least part of them could be uh, signed at the end of this uh, corpus. Thank you very much. To clarify things, 
uh, the delegations might have the right after the uh, debates regarding the considered draft resolution to motion for a vote close by close in order to not vote the entire draft resolution, but uh, specific closes and see eventually a new draft re resolution emerge. Uh, thank you. Delegation of the Venezuela, do you have a point to make? I would like to question the uh, delegation of America in terms of this statement, the use of safe space. Is it allowing me giving access to use it? It can be interpreted if you are giving allowing to anyone a safe space to do whatever they want. It will allow, encourage to mining, encourage to contamination, encourage so many things. The whole that resolution is it's vogue, it's not clear. It doesn't give a concise what how should be used. That's a safe space. Thank you. Uh, thank you, delegation of the Venezuela. However, it is you, you have not raised your hand to be part of the uh, Q&A session. Sorry. Um, I will leave uh, a few seconds for the delegation of the USA to answer quickly the point of information that will be considered as such. Thank you. Yes, just to say that again, um, in terms of how we use the space, we're not talking about what activities people undertake or entities undertake on that plot of land. But we are saying, um, and this does include actually a bit operative clause number three, which was on the screen earlier, does talk about safety zones actually being for the protection and non-disturbance of personnel, equipment, and the environment. And so we actually do think that, for example, overuse of one very specific plot of land would cause undue disturbance. And that's partly why we say when one body or one entity is using a very specific plot of land under this um, international temporary utilization zone, we're actually protecting the environment and access to it. I don't know if that answers the question, but that's the point of information that I'll draw from the operative clause. Thank you very much, delegation of the USA. Uh, proceeding now with the Q&A session, the delegation of Indonesia has the floor to ask its question. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you to the delegation of the United States, France, and the United Arab Emirates for presenting their draft resolution. And the delegation of Indonesia would just like to inquire as to why the USA is a sponsor to this resolution when they're not party to the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. Thank you. Thank you for that question. We are a party to this resolution because we believe it truly does represent an amenable and non-controversial middle way to meet the needs of all the countries who have voiced concerns over what used to be called safety zones. And we have actually reworded not just the name of these zones, but the operational clauses around what happens in those zones and how states and other bodies interact when those zones are established. The reason that we can support the Montego Bay Convention of 1982 is that we support it in the context of its proposed use in operative clause number two. And so this does not, um, this does not tantamount to us ratifying the entire Montego Bay Convention, but we do intend to ratify this draft resolution if passed at the committee, and we will abide by the Montego Bay Convention rules and consider them binding for the purposes of international temporary utilization zones. Thank you very much for your answer. Um, the UAE would like to add that it also um, gives the opportunity to other non-signators of the Montego Bay Convention to join the, those accords um, for regarding space resources without um, having to do it for Earth resources or sea resources. Thank you for your answer. Delegation of Chile, the floor is yours to ask your question. Thank you for the floor, Mr. Chair. The Chile delegation shares this great initiative, which is why it is a signatory. However, being an emerging country that has had various controversies with young clothes, it has two questions. The first one is, being a temporary concession, what will be the established time of fruitful use of these delimited areas? And if they will be open to an expansion as occurs in the young clothes? And the second one, it uh, will be the limited areas shared by two or more countries have been truth of in order to avoid existing conflicts that are usually caused by national interests. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Your questions, delegation of Chile, the delegation sponsoring the draft resolution, you have the floor to answer. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I had a lot of interference and haven't been able to understand the question. Can they be uh, written, please? Thank you. 
In this case, should the delegation of Chile write its question, we will move forward with the one of uh, Luxembourg and then go back to the questions of Chile, uh, which I, I will be reading to the delegation sponsoring the draft resolution. Delegation of Luxembourg, the floor is yours for your question. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This delegation is only asking for a confirmation due to the confusion that has been created by other questions. Therefore, is it correct for Luxembourg to understand that these temporary zones do not imply appropriation of a geographical area in celestial land, but merely are used for safety and protection? Thank you. The UAE confirms uh, that this is the good interpretation of the text. Thank you very much. Thank you. Proceeding with the question from the Republic of Chile, uh, the Chilean delegation shares this, this great initiative, which is why it is a signatory. However, being an, an emerging country that, had, that has had various controversies with UNCLOS, it has two questions. First one being a temporary, the first one being a temporary concession, uh, what would be the established time of fruitful use of these delimited areas, and if they would be open to an expansion as occurs in the UNCLOS. And the second one would be delimited areas shared by two or more countries have been thought of in order to avoid existing conflicts that are usually caused by national interest in the expansion of their exclusive economic zones. Uh, I guess the question is, have, have they been thought uh, in order to avoid existing conflicts? Delegations are sponsoring the draft resolution. The floor is yours to answer the two questions. Uh, first, uh, before responding, I would like to uh, reaffirm that uh, we are not following the laws of the sea, but the Montego Bay Convention, which uh, is in this in a similar framework, but is not the same as the laws of the sea would not be able to be followed under the Outer Space Treaty. Uh, I would let uh, my uh, fellow sponsors maybe respond to the rest of the questions. Yes, delegation of friends, go, go ahead. Okay, just a quick answer, just first the, the Montego Bay Conventions uh, enrich the principle derived from the General Assembly Resolution 2749, the area is not subject of any appropriation, it's in common goods and must be used only for exclusively peaceful purpose and exploit in the interest of all mankind. So, uh, so this resolution say that all of the countries can be part of this, uh, of this uh, temporary zone and all, also the name of the temporary zone, the name temporary said that all of your countries can, and also, um, also the, your countries, for example, Chile can be part of it. And uh, also the, the 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 temporary zone are are created uh, to avoid the, the conflict. So so yes yes your question is uh, yeah. Thank you for your your answer. Uh, the floor is now to the delegation of Finland for a last question. Uh, the question from Finland is the delegation of Finland is wondering firstly whether this draft resolution on international safety zones, which allows space binding, complies with the definitions in the draft resolution of on harmful contamination and interference, uh, which will be presented afterwards. And secondly, if these definitions are breached, are the member states liable regarding private entities' actions under the Outer Space Treaty? Thank you for your answers. The floor is yours. Uh, the responses to answer the question. I'm sorry, it's maybe I'm the one having a Wi Fi issues, but once again, right? Um, shall I repeat or? Has any it other... would be helpful if you could repeat, and then if the delegation from the UAE still needs um, to work through Wi-Fi issues, France and I can support. Perfect, thank you. Um, so the delegation of the Finland is wondering whether this resolution on international safety zones complies with the one of uh, with the definition given by the draft resolution on harmful contamination and interference, and secondly, if these definitions are breached. Uh, 
are the member states liable regarding private entities' actions under the Outer Space Treaty? Uh, I can respond to the first part of the question. Uh, I am actually not sure uh, that the draft resolution on uh, uh, harmful interference has been sent. Uh, I know that the one on harmful contamination has been, and as we are, uh, the UAE is a sponsor of this one. So I don't know how relevant it is that it is in accordance. On harmful contamination and interference which is, I am, uh, the chair is guessing it's the name of the corresponding draft resolution. Um, the point of information, yes. the draft resolution of harmful contamination is from the Czech Republic. Yes, which will be presented uh, afterwards, if I'm not mistaken. Sure. Yes. Sure. Perfect, thank you very much. In that case- Yes, might... and the, the resolution is, yeah. Uh, just so that uh, everyone is aware, the resolution is on harmful contamination only, that it was another uh, draft resolution. Uh, it was only a working paper, actually, as I don't think it ever became a draft resolution, the one on uh, harmful interference. Thank, Thank you for much. the clarification. Um, would there be an answer to the question of Finland being, if these definitions are breached, are the member states liable regarding private entities' actions under the Outer Space Treaty? Yes, uh, in short, the Outer Space Treaty establishes that um, countries do have, speaking loosely, um, oversight and liability for the activities of their own parties in outer space, even if those parties are private. And so, yes, we would expect the same to apply as laid out in our preambulatory cause clauses. Thank you very much, delegation of the USA. Uh, a small question from the Secretariat regarding a formerly uh, question asked, what is the maximum temporary, uh, maximum time for the temporary safe zone? If it is defined in the draft resolution. The maximum time is not defined. In fact, there is a provision in the um, operative clause number three that talks about how international temporary utilization zones do not actually exclude anybody even during the time that they are established. And that actually the use of those zones by multiple parties and for different durations should actually be spelled out by mutual agreement among the interested parties there. So it leaves it leaves room for negotiation, which we believe is very important in the developing landscape of space mining. Thank you very much. Uh, ending this Q&A, we shall then move to the next moderated caucus proposed by, if possible, yes, proposed by China in order to introduce its uh, draft resolution as it was the case for the former ones, the chair would advise for a reduction of the time to five minutes, followed by a Q&A. Um, China, if it's agreeable for you, we would then move forward. Yes, that is agreeable to China. Perfect, thank you very much. Um, in, that case, in that case, Mrs. Rapporteur, if you could share the uh, DR 6.1, and we would then move forward with the presentation. Here, just a point of information. So all the delegate, all the sponsors on this draft resolution together share five minutes of speaking time, right? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, um, Mrs. Rapporteur. As soon as you are ready, delegations of China, Belgium, India, and Russian Federation, you may start presenting your draft resolution. Thank you, Chair, and all the preceding delegations for their introduction of their draft resolutions. Over the weekend, China and its co-sponsors have again and again explained their proposal, which already has 11 signatories to have a binding framework to first, standardize definitions with reference to the Hague building blocks, second, expressly allow space resource extraction and prohibit private ownership rights, and third, and most importantly, establish the international space resource authority. China and its co-sponsors understand that some countries are against of this idea of establishing ISRA, 
because it is not possible under their national legislative framework. China wishes to stress that, according to Article 1 of the Outer Space Treaty, space is, as I quote, the province of all mankind, unquote, which means that any national interest has to be outweighed by the bigger picture of ensuring inclusive development. Therefore, China and its co-sponsors have summarized three reasons to clarify why ISRA is the best approach to maintain a balance on these two issues, which is the crux of our sessions this weekend. First, China notes that some preceding draft resolutions are limiting benefits of operations to information sharing only, which with due respect, will not benefit less developed countries who do not even have capability to conduct space activities in the first place. However, the proposal of China and its co-sponsors goes beyond that. With the establishment of ISRA, and especially the ISRA fund, less developed countries can also obtain sharing of space science, technology, education, and more importantly, money, as delegation from Iran has just expressed concerns on, to develop their own capabilities and be actually involved in the space race. Second, under the assembly structure of the ISRA, all countries, including those who are not state parties to the Outer Space Treaty, will have an equal right to voice out if they wish to gain whatever benefits from the space resource operation, as well as being notified well in advance of the operation commencement to prevent any unexpected discovery of flags of certain countries like what has happened just very recently. Third, operators, especially the private space companies, which will usually prioritize profits, will not have to share their benefits to the countries who did not express their desires to gain any benefit from their operation in the first place. So with that, to ensure consensus can be reached, China will now yield the time to first, the delegation from Belgium, to explain how ISRA will also ensure peaceful uses of outer space, including safety zones, as the delegation from Chile has just raised out, through alternative dispute, me uh, dispute resolution mechanism. Then China will yield the time to delegations from India and Russia on how ISRA will also promote environmental sustainability, as the delegations from Japan, Italy, and Chile are concerned of. Thank you. Thank you, China, for uh, the floor. The delegation of Belgium would like to present a legal committee that is part of the ISRA uh, body. So we will establish a legal committee that would provide uh, an alternative dispute resolution forum where uh, both arbitration and mediation can take place. It would be um, competent for all airspace and outer space when these actors fall under the jurisdiction of two or more states or when the appropriate national authorities have referred to the, dis the legal dispute committee. And uh, the basis is offering a binding resolution when conflicts arise. There's also an option for summary justice when uh, two actors have conflicts that there could be a swift resolution. And um, there's also a clause on appeal um, and I will now yield the rest of the time to India and Russia, please. Thank you, delegation of Belgium, for giving me this opportunity and also to the rest of the delegations for listening to us patiently. I would like to explain about the supervising committee under the ISRA, which will request all the operators to test the materials before they are, be, they are sent to the outer space and also will be monitoring the uh, continuous test and the space resource activities that are being conducted by the operators to ensure Article 9 of the treaty and, is and, is no, and no harmful contamination is done in the celestial bodies and outer space. And it will oblige, to operators, the, ob oblige the operators to clean up uh, this, any of the space debris created by their space resource activity and also will implement the green technologies for sustainable development of global space economy in order to restore infrastructure, improve quality and control of the services and products. This committee is also empowered to call stop to an operation should any, uh, if an operation is found to have created any contamination or. Uh, shall I continue? Is that fine? Uh, 
Mr. Chair? I believe that Mr. Chair has some uh, technical difficulties. He seems frozen. As I uh, see, uh, unless he will react in a moment, then uh, in the capacity as vice chair, I will, uh, at the discretion of the vice chair, I will allow extension by two minutes for you to continue explaining the paper. Could I please ask Mrs. Rapporteur to start the new timer? Thank you. So as I was explaining, the supervising committee will also be empowered to call stop, up, stop to an operation if they found any contamination or environmental irregularity within the, space, uh, within the outer space domain. And one of the main uh, committees that will comprise to ISRA will be on the corporate and also which will, which will encourage the cooperative activities and collaboration between the several space actors is the finance committee and which I believe none of the uh, draft res resolutions presented today did not address. According to the finance committee, they will assure every member state to the treaty engaged or interested in space resource extraction and utilization will have equitable opportunities and benefits and all actors from public to private, which also includes the public uh, develop, developing and underdeveloped member states as well, will, will have the right to share equal benefits through this committee. This committee will supervise over the space resource transactions that will be taking place and will provide a common platform to all space actors to engage in space resource extraction and utilization and to invest in projects and thereby promoting cooperation and collaboration between the actors. According to this finance committee, you, the, in, this, uh, it allows the actors to invest in projects as capital investments as once proposed, as once as a proposal for resource mi mining is being presented at the assembly. And this also allows the fact that like 40% of the total profit while uh, will belong to the funds of the ISRA after the resource has been sold in market. And this fund uh, will be used for the countries who will need monetary support to develop the capacity on space resource research and development by eligible actors, like how the delegation of China mentioned earlier. It also will disseminate the remaining 60% of the profit to the capital investors who were invested in that particular project. And higher the investments the, the actors might have made, the higher the profits they can benefit through this financial structure. So um, thank you, delegation of India. Uh, unfortunately, uh, our chair is experiencing some technical difficulties with his Wi-Fi connection. Uh, so uh, hence, I will take over chairing uh, for, uh, for the next few minutes. So now, shall we uh, please open the Q&A session? So please, uh, yeah, I'd like to highlight a couple of things. Unfortunately, you have exhausted your time to present the papers since other delegations, uh, other uh, other draft resolutions had five minutes together to present it. Unfortunately, you have exhausted the time, so I cannot allow further extension due to fairness for uh, other propositions. So uh, could we please motion for a Q&A session? I believe that presentation of the United Arab Emirates was the first one to raise their hand. Uh, I think Finland was before me. Ah, yes, I'm sorry then. And then the Finland motions to ask questions to this resolution for five minutes. It is directly approved. Um, could you please, if you want to ask a question, uh, raise your hands and I will start acknowledging you in the order it appears. So uh, yes, delegation of Finland, could you please post your question? So the first question coming from the delegation of Finland is, firstly, where does the money come from for establishing ISRA? And secondly, why not use the wasted resources on establishing a redundant authority instead for supporting developing countries and using it to contribute to space activities of developing countries? So could please uh, the, um, the delegations who present the draft resolution answer that and the rapporteur to start the timer. And I would like to yield the time to delegation from India to explain how money comes from uh, the ESA fund. 
Sure, absolutely. Uh, well, according to what we have mentioned right now, the ESA fund, ESA funds will collect the money that will be uh, received, price money that will be received by selling the space resources in a market value. And this fund will be given to the countries who are in need of money through loan proposals. And these loan proposal, loans will be accepted uh, after analyzing the need and the proposals that the countries or the state uh, or the actors submit to the assembly. And these loans will be given in installments, which will ensure the complete usage of the money that will be provided to them, which will, and up each installment, there will be a report that will be analyzing the progress that the country might have, the country or the actor might have made when it comes to the project development. This will enable all the countries within the global system to engage in space resource uh, extraction uh, and utilization research and development and in future to uh, find more resources for the whole of the humankind. I hope that answers the question. To answer the second question of the delegation from Finland, with all due respect, China and its co-sponsors cannot agree that the establishment of ESRA is redundant. The unexpected discovery of the flags of certain countries, like what has happened just very recently, shows that there is an urgent need to have an impartial and multilateral and inclusive authority to regulate and supervise what is happening in the outer space. Therefore, we submit that since that uh, the uh, since there is an absence of such an authority, China and its co-sponsors feel that it is the best approach to have an authority to, uh, to regulate and supervise space resource operations from both private and public actors. Thank you, delegation of China and India. The next on the speaker's list to ask questions to this draft resolution is United Arab Emirates. You have the floor. Thank you, Madam Vice Chair. Uh, the UAE, uh, along with uh, Japan, Luxembourg, it Italy, and the United States of America, uh, considers this resolution as unfriendly for three main reasons. The creation of a space authority with executive power goes against many national space laws. It is impossible for us as delegation of those countries to support such organs. The UAE also believes that accountability can be reached through the International Temporary Reutilization Zone that they are proposing in a draft resolution uh, already discussed. Furthermore, we generally disapprove the militarized language under the section developing a defense space strategy on how to operationalize the space domain. We oppose any language that would allow military interpretation now of our future generation. I will add that, that Sorry, I will add to that that the procedure that there is there have been procedural issue already raised yesterday. Such a subject about the difference has never been mentioned during any caucus, moderated or unmoderated. To end that, I will clarify my question. Uh, this, which is uh, as follow: uh, How will you manage to put in place an ISRA when several countries cannot, in any way, uh, even if the form is changed, reach consensus on that? Yes, uh, the, the delegation of Belgium would like to thank the United Arab Emirates for its question. Uh, as proposed yesterday during a moderated caucus, Belgium still believes the, um, the creation of ISRA is essential and also proposed to create a timeline in order for all the states involved to be able to harmonize their national legislation with the creation of an international body. As China previously expressed, the issue is pressing and very necessary both for the public and private sector. And we believe uh, definitely for the EU countries, harmonization shouldn't be an issue since it's one of the fundamental pr uh, principles of EU law and the European Union. I would now like to yield the rest of the time to China, please. Building onto the delegation from Belgium, China and its co-sponsors wish to uh, express that these countries are actually open for discussion on any possibility of including those states who have national legislation against the establishment of ISRA to find a consensus. China and its co-sponsors uh, remain in their position that any leg national legislation that goes against the fundamental principles of international law, which is enshrined in Article 1 and Article 2 of the Outer Space Treaty, those national legislations cannot be acknowledged by 
other countries like China and its co-sponsors who have been abiding by the fundamental principles of international space law. Therefore, China and its co-sponsors will welcome any discussion from these countries to see the way forward. Thank you. Uh, can I respond or not, uh, Ms. Vice Chair, Madam Vice Chair? Unfortunately, we have a lot of speakers on the list, so I would like to give time to other people, uh, other delegations to ask questions. The next on the speakers list is the delegation of Australia to ask a question to this draft, draft resolution. Thank you, Vice Chair. Uh, thank you for your for your draft resolution. Some some points of concern from the delegation of Australia. First of which being not many countries, if any, currently have the end to end capability for, for space resource mining. Uh, what I mean by that is Australia might be regarded as a great place for resource extraction. They do not have a launch capability. Similarly, countries such as in, in the EU may have a launch capability. They do not have the world-class um, remote operations capabilities. Now, if I take this back to an emerging country uh, or developing country such as Australia, the country itself is trying to build a sovereign capability. The public sector do not have the funds, do not have the skill sets, do not have the technologies to fund such a such a such an activity so a lot of it is being funded by the private sector where the risk of this comes in is the private sector will be spending millions and millions of dollars to try to build build out new capabilities try to build a sovereign supply chain israel israel potentially takes away a lot of the profits and a lot of the incentivization for australia to continue down this track the loss of a country such as australia such as elements in south america and their, and their skill sets around resource extraction will actually be detrimental to the, the space extraction policies that we do want to have. So what, what the delegation of Australia would like to do is discuss how that could be overcome without stifling innovation when it is a private-led um, private led activity at the moment. Thank you. Thank you, delegation of Australia. Now I will ask the rapporteur to start the timer again for the presenting delegations to respond. Delegation of India would like to mention that how, uh, I, if I get it correctly, delegation of uh, Australia is have a worry about how ISRA's establishment would actually uh, hinder the growth of your private space actors. Is that right? That is correct, but okay. not just Australia. Okay, true. Uh, so through ISRA, it's not just the collaboration with the pu public space actors, I mean, the government space, act, national space actors that is there, it's also the private actors. And apart from any of the UN bodies that, they, that has already been there, ISRA actually provides private actors also an equal opportunity as the state actors. It can also engage in the space resource activity through collaborations and have the same benefits like having investments. And when it comes to the share that I have mentioned during the uh, discussion, introduction of the, the draft resolution, the 60 to 40 percentage of it, apparently, as we all know, and I have been reiterating this yesterday also, like these kind of space activities are very expensive. And in order to share a common consensus or to have every country or every actor to have an equitable opportunity when it comes to space resource extraction and utilization, we will have to give in more uh, share of it for the funds actually that will actually provide to those actors who would need the monetary benefit. I understand 60% will be comparatively less compared to the uh, uh, usual benefits that you might get, but Thank you. And uh, unfortunately, despite a huge interest in more questions to this draft resolution, we still have two more resolutions to go through. And therefore, I will uh, stop the time for, uh, and I will not allow any extensions for this uh, Q&A session. And therefore, we are moving back to the formal debate speakers list to introduce the next uh, draft resolution. And that will be, I believe, the delegation of um, Venezuela who proposed a motion to adding to the Netherlands accountability of international rules and regulations. And could I ask the delegation of Venezuela whether they would like to adjust their request to introduce the next draft resolution? Hello, is the delegation of Venezuela present? I believe not, hence the motion is uh, rejected. And the next on the speaker's list is the Czech 
uh, delegation of the Czech Republic with the motion to introduce their draft resolution. And we will continue as, uh, as till now with the 10 minutes, uh, I'm sorry, with the five minute presentation and the Q&A session afterwards. So I will ask the rapporteur to, uh, to show the resolution on the screen. And uh, delegation of Czech Republic, please get ready to be presenting your draft. Ah, thank you. But not just yet, we have to see it on the screen and also start the timer to ensure fairness of the process. Yeah, noted. Wonderful, thank you. And yes, the delegation of Czech Republic, you're welcome to present yeah. your working. Uh, yeah, your thank you very much, uh, our Vice uh, Chairman and uh, distinguished delegates. The proposition of this paper is about the definition of harmful contamination. So looking at Article 9, it uh, says that um, states shall avoid harmful contamination of states and celestial bodies. This is mentioned in Article 9 of uh, 1967 outer space treaty which states that the following in the exploration and the use of outer space including the moon and other celestial bodies states parties shall be guided by the principle of cooperation and mutual assistance and shall conduct activities in outer space so when you look at uh, this article 9 it just says you avoid them for contamination so acknowledging that uh, we've got the need of using the outer space for sustainable we need to ensure that all humanity can continue to use the space for peaceful uses and uh, purposes for social economic benefit in the long term. And also noting that the effects of uh, climate change on Earth, it is important to avoid this, that space resources are being harmful, contaminated, so that they can uh, start to affect uh, space man-made objects, and including extraterrestrial matter on Earth. Reaffirming the principle of international cooperation, discussion, and agreements, clear definitions designed to ensure that outer space is safe, secure, and peaceful uh, uses is, is very essential. Uh, the concern is that uh, the Outer Space Treaty Article 9 of 1967 is unclear to what extent can, uh, in any celestial bodies, can be mined before we can say there is harmful contamination. So emphasizing the need of preserving the outer space for the current and the future generation, and also further noting that the mining operations are typically considering horrible amounts of water. This causes tensions for the local communities and also causes pollutants to the water bodies, reducing the water levels. And also the reduction of water levels is a key sustainable uh, for the water for water in the mining. And also there's a challenge of uh, water within the mining operations. So now looking at the definition of the proposed uh, uh, definition for, or for the harmful contamination is that any activity that endangers the space environment, functioning of equipment or safety services or seriously degrades the space objects in outer space and the earth as well as introduction of extraterrestrial matter on earth. So this definition is also catering for the space segment and also the ground segment. So this is the uh, proposition from the Czech Republic. And I would like to thank our sponsors. I think we've got about 20 signatories and uh, we've got the sponsors, the UAE, we've got Nigeria, and we've got uh, Chile. I pass the time to the other sponsors if they have anything to say that I've, I, I might have missed. Yes, so are any other uh, sponsors willing to add something? Uh, yes. Uh, so uh, I would add that uh, uh, a sponsor was forgotten. Uh, Brazil is a sponsor of the resolution too. Uh, and uh, we have uh, indeed uh, 20 uh, signatory country. So I think we only uh, miss uh, one signature to be a consensus. Um, and uh, the UAE is, uh, would like to express that it's, they are especially 
um, happy with the affirmation have been concluded and uh, that uh, this uh, part of uh, this resolution has also been added to the sustainability um, paper discuss a specific resolution is seen as friendly and uh, that we will be able to go to move forward in the general final resolution we are currently building with consensus thank you very much Thank you, delegation of the United Arab Emirates and the delegation of the Netherlands. Do you have anything to add? Since I can see that you have your raised hand. No, Madam Chair, it's a question. Ah, it's a question. So are any other sponsors uh, willing to add anything to this presentation? If not, could I then please ask the sponsors to yield the time back to the chair? Yes, we yielded the time back to the chair. Thank you. Thank you so much. And coming back to the um, to the list of speakers for this discussion, could I please ask uh, was ask one of the delegations to motion for a Q and A session to this resolution uh, to this draft resolution? Uh, so the sponsor of this paper would like to motion for a Q and A resolution um, of uh, five minutes. But five, uh, five minutes uh, in the light of it being most almost a consensus draft resolution, I will shorten the time to two minutes since we still have one more uh, draft resolution to discuss. And uh, the motion passes. Uh, and uh, could I please ask for raised hands to ask questions to this draft resolution? Yes, first delegation of the Netherlands. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, as part uh, as party to the Moon Agreement, uh, the delegation of the Netherlands believes the definition of harmful contamination should be limited to disrupting the balance of the space environment, introducing adverse changes in that environment, or by introducing the introduction of extra environmental matter. But we do agree with the sponsor that this would relate to both outer space and celestial bodies. Uh, we believe that e equipment and safety services are not sub subject to contamination and should preferably not be included in this definition. Uh, since this relates to the topic of interference instead. Would the sponsors consider removing these from the definition? Yes, okay. uh, uh, and the sponsors have two minutes reply time to all of the questions. So please, if the rapporteur could start the timer. Okay, uh, I would answer it like this, uh, that uh, the issue of interference previously the definition, we had said that when we put the, when there's obstruction, uh, of um, the obstruction of the space objects. And um, that's when we would uh, term the, uh, use the name interference. But in terms of harmful contamination, it can still contaminate equipment. So we thought that we should not limit it to make it narrow, but for to make it broad so that it can cover uh, also the contamination of equipment and also other space objects and also the edge segment so that it cannot only cover, it needs to be futuristic. Thank you. Does any other sponsor would like to add anything to that? Thank you. Are there any other, uh, any other questions on the floor? If not, could I please ask the, the sponsors to yield the time back to the chair? Yes, I yield time to the chair. Thank you. And so we are going into the speakers list for the formal debates and the delegation of Chile motioning to present the last of the draft resolutions to be presented today. Could I please have the delegation of Chile motion for it officially? Yes, I ask it. Um to give the time for the presentation with Italy, normally. Yes, of course, that, that is... Uh, but you still motion for... Uh, no, I ask it to, to, to eliminate the motion. Actually. To eliminate the motion? Yeah. Okay, that's unusual. Um, it is because it's in, in the opening of the debate. And fiercely, the, the motion of Italy, that's very short, but after that, I give the time to have the time to explain our draft resolution. 
So do I understand correctly that you do not want to motion for anything right now? Yes. The location of Chile. Thank you. Mm. And then um, I have noticed that there was a raised hand, I believe, by the delegation of Luxembourg. Do you have a question? Um, no, Madam Vice Chair, is not exactly a question. This delegation would like to motion for the previously mentioned extension to the uh, draft resolution presented by the delegations of China, Russia, Belgium, and India, if possible. Uh, yes, are there any objections to the motion? No, thank you. Then we shall be continuing with this uh, motion by the delegation of Luxembourg to extend the time for the Q&A session to the draft resolution by the delegation of China, Belgium. And we will give a moment to our rapporteur to put it, uh, put it on paper. Delegation of Luxembourg, do you have a proposed time for this motion, for this Q&A session? And this delegation believes it would be under discretion of the chair, but it would be nice to maybe have five, 10 minutes if possible. Yes, since we are short on time, uh, under discretion of the chair, we set the time for five minutes, given the big interest, but we still have to keep in mind that we have to vote on all of the resolutions. So we have to reserve enough time for that. And then please, the motion passes, please raise your hands if you would like to ask questions relating to the draft resolution presented by the delegation of China and Belgium, delegation of Japan, delegation of Italy, delegation of Luxembourg and delegation of the US. And delegation of Germany. Right, uh, so please, uh, delegation of uh, Japan, state your question. Thank you very much. Uh, the delegation of Japan has two questions. The first one being about uh, the delegation of Japan is worried about the efficiency of such an organ. Um, in the future, there might be a lot of uh, space mining project that needs to be to pass through this uh, process of discussion and voting. Uh, and how is that possible to happen if there's too many of those projects? Uh, the second question is wondering why um, the, I'm gonna re ask the question. So many countries, they, the national law is clashing with this idea and you're asking us to take the time to change our legislation or for Japan, it would actually result to the complete deletion of, the, um, of our national law on space resources. For instance, the 40, the 40% share benefits completely clashes with the law of Japan because if Japan grants a permit for a space resource exploitation, the, owner, the full ownership um, belongs to the company exploiting. Uh, and many other uh, clauses in your um, proposition is clashing with the law of Japan, which will result that it's impossible to uh, change our national law on that matter. So how would you address this issue? Thank you. Thank you for the question. The delegation have now a time to answer and the rapporteur will start the timer now. On the second question from the delegation of Japan, China and its co-sponsors wish to express that they're not trying to ask Japan or any other countries with national legislative framework to change their national framework because in essence, that will be our interference on the territorial sovereignty of those countries. However, it will be the responsibility of those states to view to, to try to come up with solutions on seeing how they can comply with the fundamental principles of international law if their national framework is in contradiction to international law. Because under Article 3 of the Outer Space Treaty, all states, all state parties to the treaty have to comply with international law. And on the first question on the delegation of Japan, we note that the efficiency problem may constitute a hindrance of uh, the development of especially private space activities. However, China and co-sponsors wish to stress that we cannot have efficiency over, uh, over the compliance of international law. We need, to, we need to maintain the space as a province of all mankind and maintain that the outer space is used for the benefits of all mankind. Therefore, if 
we emphasize on efficiency of space development that will essentially forego the interest of the less space bearing countries, which will not be a favorable condition for all countries, if that answers your question. And the delegation of India would like to agree with the delegation of China as well, and also to add and to make a clarity that it's 60 percentage of the profit that will go along, uh, that will be disseminated across the different investors of it. And it's not just the 40 percentage, the 40 percentage will only go into the ISRA fund. It's 60 percentage that it will be that will be disseminated across the various investors that is going to be in that particular project. So I hope that also gets cleared through this answer. Thank you. Thank you. I believe that answers the question. And so the next on the speaker's list is the delegation of Italy with their question. You have the floor. Thank you, Madam Vice Chair. Uh, the delegation of Italy, um, after having carefully read uh, the draft and having noted what's written in the first subparagraph of the first operative clause, would like to point out that establishing an assembly could potentially, if not surely, be discriminatory, namely because the clause cites not limit to only public actors, but does not explain it further. And also because as uh, the Delation of Italy has pointed out in previous sessions, having to communicate proposals beforehand uh, may leave out all those countries who do not yet have the means to carry out such assessments. And it would also prevent other countries like the US and Japan, um, as Japan has already stated, from participating as they're prohibited by their own laws from joining and saying that trying to come up with solutions is up to the state uh, legislation is essentially not solving the issue. So uh, the delegation of Italy was asking how they uh, were thinking of solving this problem. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, delegation of Italy. And now please, we're looking forward to the answer to that. If other co-sponsors would like to speak. Yes, uh, the delegation of Belgium would like to address the issues raised by the delegation of Italy. Firstly, uh, this is a draft resolution. We were under a lot of time pressure and uh, compiled this in less than 12 hours. So this isn't the complete and final version. We were also open to suggestions and amendments later on. So this version isn't complete. Uh, one of our core uh, principles is involving both the private and the public sector, given this may have issues in the future during space mining, for instance, if SpaceX and another state are mining the same asteroid, this might uh, create conflicts and tensions. And therefore, we established the legal committee. And we would like to remind everyone again that uh, the non-appropriation principle is still in place. And no states or authorities have a claim on outer space or its resources. This is a global good for all of mankind and is used to be uh, is to be used uh, to benefit all of mankind. Thank you. And the Indian delegation would like to agree with uh, what the delegation of Belgium has mentioned. And uh, to point out that when it comes to the concerns regarding the role of private actors, I would like to remind the delegation of Italy that it again comes back to the Article 6, which clearly states that the private actors come under the national legislation of a particular country where to which the, the company is registered to. Through ISRA, we are actually providing these private actors an opportunity to give come ahead uh, to have same equal benefits as the state actors as well. And they will not just be represented as a private company, but along with to which co country they are registered to. For example, if it's SpaceX who is, represent, who is being represented in ISRA, they will be represented as SpaceX from the United States of America, not just as SpaceX. And they will be obliging to whatever the national legislations of the USA will be at that point when it comes to the space resource mining of private space actors. Thank you. Thank you, delegation of India to this, uh, for this answer. The next on the speaker's list is the delegation of Luxembourg with their question. Thank you, Madam Vice Chair. This delegation has a few questions and would like to ask one by one for a better understanding, if possible. Is that in order? Uh, it, it may be in order. However, we are short on time with this one again. So it's this delegation will try to make it as quick as possible. Yes, but I also urge the, um, the replying parties to be as concise as possible as well. So the first question is a yes or no answer question. So very quick. 
given that you have introduced the topic of market value, therefore having a market in which a value is state imposed and not internationally impartial. So the concept is not practical for the members in the house. This delegation would like to know if the sponsors are willing to take out the clause on a 40-60 share and a fund. Is it possible to just strike it out? Just the monetary benefits? Uh, just the monetary benefits. You, you have to, uh, you are asking the sponsors to strike out the 40, 60 share from the monetary benefits. If you are willing to strike out the 40, 60 share and the fund. Simple answer would be no. Oh, sorry. The simple answer would be no, because for the interest of the less developing countries, they need monetary benefits. Therefore, China and its co-sponsors would seek a compromise to have the 40 and 60 percent distribution to be amended for the interest of the uh, commercial actors. However, a complete strikeout of that fund is not possible. In, in the that case, <laughs> the second question would be, as stated by Japan, the request to change national law for international adaptation is inappropriate. There is no current breach of international law and Japan's delegation at the moment cannot breach its current national law. Are the sponsors of this draft aware of the fact that this would lead to not reaching consensus? The simple answer would be yes. China and its co-sponsors understand that Japan and maybe other countries are bound by their own national law. However, this is not the sole duty of their country. Their country is also duty bound by international law to comply with international law principles. These countries are not trying to say that Japan is contravening international law with their national framework. However, they have an additional duty to comply with international law, if that answers your question. Yes, and this concludes the time for this extension of the Q&A session. I am very sorry to all the delegations that did not manage to ask their question. However, in the light that we are actually running very short on time to introduce amendments and subsequently vote on the draft resolutions, at the discretion of the chair, I will, uh, I'm calling for an unmoderated caucus in Gather Town so that all of the delegations can introduce amendments to their draft resolutions and hopefully also check out all the disagreements that might be that will be enabling the um yeah the vo voting in favor for the resolutions so the time for this unmoderated caucus is 20 minutes and also we will take advantage of the modern technologies and i ask uh, all of the delegations for the distribution of the amended uh, draft resolutions via whatsapp so that also everyone can uh, have a look at uh, have a look at them and read through them before coming to a vote at uh, fifteen thirty of the Central European time. So in twenty minutes. So uh, yes, I can see that there is a question uh, from the delegation of the United Arab Emirates. Uh, yes, the, uh, the delegation of the United Arab Emirates would like to ask uh, when we will be able to ask uh, for uh, the time for voting to start. It, it will be in 20 minutes Thank after, you. after this mod uh, unmoderated caucus. Thank you. So yes, please, I, uh, I advise everyone to go to the gather link, uh, gather town link now. <laughs> Good luck.
is not um, uh, uh, okay sorry okay, sorry uh, uh, would you
Delegations, I am afraid the timing is running short, and you may all go back to the Zoom. Thank you. If all the delegations could now rejoin the Zoom, we may uh, start a small, uh, small time in order to amend the presented draft resolutions before going straight to voting. Considering the current session ends in 25 minutes, we, we might run a bit short. Um, if all the delegations are present, I would then advise for uh, the potential amendments motions. If so, are there any on the floor? And also the chair would like to apologize for the formal technical issues that he may have encountered. Yes, delegation of Luxembourg. Um, this delegation has a point of information and possibly a motion later on. Mm -hmm. Could the time for this unmoderated caucus just be extended by five minutes only? We are discussing the formation of amendments to pass directly as friendly amendments. Therefore, no need to vote which will be quicker. You would thus motion for an extension to a five minute of this unmoderated caucus? Exactly. Okay, are there any, any objection to this motion considering the, the short timing also? If not, I allow the current motion considering it has as an objective to reduce the time uh, allocated to amendments further on. And you may now start as soon as possible the current uh, unmoderated caucus.
Esteemed delegates, uh, I hope you are all back from the Gather Town and the Unmoderated Caucus. I would then ask if there are any um, amendment motion or any motion, any really on the floor currently before we can start the voting process. Yes, delegation of the Luxembourg. We will uh, not you. extend again to get it. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> that was not the motion from the delegation of Luxembourg. We completely agree. <laughs> uh, we would like to have a motion to propose an amendment to the legal framework draft resolution that has already been presented by the delegation of Luxembourg and its uh, co-sponsors, Germany, Finland and Australia. OK, would you mind uh, eventually presenting these amendments? Yes. There, there are no uh, left other motions for amendments on the floor. Yes. Could this delegation be given half a minute to correctly write it down and share it in the chat box? Uh, sure. Please Thank do. You. And in the meantime, if there are any other amendments on the floor, please do not hesitate to raise your hand. Yes, delegation of Belgium. Um, the delegation of Belgium, if I may quickly ask my co-sponsors if we do want to go for amendments as well. Yes, yes. Yes, then the delegation will say yes. Would you then like to motion for an amendment regarding your own yes. draft resolution? Yes, sure. please. Okay. Delegation of the Luxembourg, as soon as you are ready to present, do not hesitate to take the floor. Okay, so point of information to the chair and to the house. Yes, delegation of Luxembourg, please go ahead. This delegation has tried to be as diplomatic as possible, including all the comments that have been uh, pointed out in the gather town very recently. Therefore, is also looking forward to a few more comments that might adjust this amendment to be passed as a friendly amendment in case it doesn't already. In case there is any objection, with a minor terminology. Thank you. Oh, would you then like to uh, start presenting the, uh, the corresponding clause? Uh, yes, should this delegation read it out loud? Yes, if possible. Uh, it would be clause number eight to be added to the already existing draft resolution called Legal Framework, sponsored by Germany, Finland, Australia, and Luxembourg. Yes. So the last clause would read, calls all member states to include in their international agenda a further discussion in this committee for the possible creation of the International Space Resource Council, as well as a standardization of crucial definitions in the space sector. Would the corresponding sponsors of the current paper uh, deem this uh, amendment friendly or unfriendly? Delegation of Germany find this amendment friendly. We just maybe like to add by the, uh, not before the time of 2030. Thank you. That is actually a very important point that this delegation has made due to time constraints. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, delegation of 
a third delegation sponsoring this uh, draft resolution. Do you deem this uh, amendment friendly or unfriendly? The, the delegation of Australia deems this friendly. Thank you. Thank you very much. Delegation of China, do you have a comment to make? Yes, Chair. Uh, China wants to ask for a point of information. Can China ask for moderation, uh, modification on the added clause? Uh, you may make a point of information to the delegation of Luxembourg. Is it okay if China does it now? Yes. Okay, so China would like to propose the inclusion of all the organs stipulated in page seven to, to 12 uh, on the organs of the ISRC, just so every country when discussing their national legislation can also be on the same page on what this ISRC is going to do. Okay, so uh, sorry about the background noise. Okay, so uh, two main points. Number one, uh, the clause has been changed and it has been sent by, via the chat box, including the 2030 agenda that was mentioned earlier by Germany. And uh, to respond to China's question, um, we don't think there is any a problem by doing so, including the, the organs that have been mentioned previously um, through the draft resolution proposed by China, India, Russia, and Belgium. However, this might make the clause a little longer and um, it might be reiterative because the conversation on the International Space Resource Council will of course also hold the conversation of the organs that come with the International Space uh, Resource Council. So therefore, we might be getting caught up in formalities which are not necessary at this point. Thank you for your answer. As the, anyway, the uh, amendment was deemed friendly by the three sponsors, it is now included in the draft resolution. I am sorry for the delegation of the Netherlands, Belgium and, and the Czech Republic. We not. Uh, we do not have the time currently to take any more points. I will then ask to the second amendment to be uh, presented uh, as fast as possible. If the delegation of Belgium can present this amendment, it would be perfect. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, we were trying to incorporate our uh, what China just mentioned, the pages 7 to 12 into uh, the draft resolution of Luxembourg as well, because we think our draft resolution given its 14 uh, pages might be too long to go by amendment, amend, go by amendment by amendment. If China asked the co-sponsor, can chip in a word? Yes, go ahead, but uh, you have 20 seconds. China and its co-sponsors understand the concerns of Luxembourg. So if we cannot uh, agree on including all the functions of the organs, could we just at least include the organs, like the five organs, so that everyone will be on the same page? Could this delegation please, please ask the chair if this would also pass as a friendly amendment with the co-sponsors of Luxembourg? Luxembourg has no uh, evident issue on this. It was just trying to prevent extra formalities which we believe are not necessary. However, if Germany, Australia and Finland also agree, we do not have a major problem. Uh, this amendment was not written, so it's currently do not hold any consistency. And unfortunately, we do not have the time to include it anywhere uh, if it's not uh, submitted currently in the chat uh, in a written form. We will then uh, start, unfortunately, the voting process, if possible. So before this committee enters, however, the final voting process to adopt a resolution, uh, the committee shall remind the delegation of the procedure. Uh, so all delegations will be called in a roll call following the English alphabetical order. Uh, if they are present or present and voting, as mentioned in the beginning of the session during the, the roll call, uh, when the delegation is called, uh, it may answer yes or no, and shall add with rights, uh, should they wish to explain their choice afterwards, with a speaking time to the discretion of the chair. Uh, should any delegation have an answer no, the, res the resolution will not pass, as considered in a consensus basis voting, and the committee shall proceed at the end of the vote with the next resolution. 
Uh, before the voting procedure started, uh, the delegations may motion for a reordering of the draft resolutions, uh, which requires a simple majority to pass. However, uh, considering the current process has been changed to uh, voting uh, and several draft uh, resolutions being acceptable, if several pass and potentially merge into one final one, we would then proceed without such a motion. Uh, if possible, yes, we do not, we do have the voting record. So considering draft resolution number 6.1, I will then start the roll call. So delegation of Australia, um, do you vote yes or no considering this draft resolution? Any information to the chair? Yes, delegation the, of Luxembourg. Could the draft resolutions also point out the top the main topics for the draft resolutions so we do not need to remember all the numbers uh respectively thank you <laughs> the secretary would like to remind all the delegation that they can take notes <laughs> during the sessions uh but yes it is possible so draft resolution number one by 1.1 1 .1, sorry presented by the czech republic as well as i'm sorry Finding my own notes, uh, the Un uh, United Arab Emirates, Brazil, Chile, and Nigeria regarding the definition of what is a harmful contamination. Um, and we will then start with the delegations of Australia. A delegation of Australia, uh, yes, with no rights. Thank you. Delegation of Belgium. Yes, with no rights. Delegation of Brazil. Yes, with no rights. Um, all the delegations do not have to precise if it's uh, with no rights, but Can please I ask do if it's with rights. Clarification, a point of information, please, or not? Yes, delegation of Russell. Just to be, just to be, just to be sure, um, no rights means we can't get asked questions after the vote. Is that tr clear with, or not? With when a delegation uh, quotes with rights, it means it's gonna exp it's gonna have to explain uh, its vote after ah, the okay. voting. Okay, just well, no give, rights. A point of information regarding the current voting. Uh, do not state no rights uh, in order to gain some time, uh, but if you do precise with rights, uh, if, wish it, if wished, uh, please do so. Delegation of Canada, uh, which is absent, sorry. Delegation of Chile. Yes, uh, no rights. Delegation of China. Yes, with no rights. Delegation of the Czech Republic. Delegation of the Czech Republic? Yes, with no rights. Thank you. Delegation of Egypt, which is probably absent. Delegation of Finland? Thank you. Dele yes, delegation of France? Yes, with no rights. Delegation of Germany? Yes, with no rights. Delegation of India? Yes, with no rights. Delegation of Indonesia. Delegation of Indonesia. With no rights. Yes. Okay, thank you. Delegation of uh, Iran states yes in the chat. Delegation of Israel is absent. Delegation of Italy. With no rights. Thank you. Delegation of Japan. Yes, with no rights. Delegation of Korea. Yes, with no rights. Delegation of Luxembourg. Yes, with no rights. Delegation of Mexico. Yes, with no rights. Delegation of the Netherlands. Yes. Thank you. Delegation of Nigeria. Yes, with no rights. Delegation of Russia. Yes, with no rights. Delegation of South Africa. Um, they delegation. are absent. They are absent, thank you very much. Delegation of the United Arab Emirates. Yes, with no rights. Delegation of the United Kingdom. Yes, with no rights. Followed by the one of Ukraine. Yes, with no rights. 
the one of the United States of America. Yes. Delegation of Venezuela. Yes, we said no right. I'm particularly glad to notice that there is no stabbing in the back at the last moment. And we shall then proceed with the draft resolution uh, 2.1 being the one from Japan, Chile, and Italy regarding sustainability information sharing and technology. And we will then proceed with the voting procedure. So the delegation of Australia. Yes, with no rights. Delegation of Belgium. Yes. Thank you. Delegation of Brazil. Yes, with no rights. Delegation of Canada, which is absent, sorry. Delegation of Chile. Yes, with no rights. Delegation of China. No, with no rights. Thank you. Delegation of the Czech Republic. Yes, with no rights. Thank you. Delegation of Egypt. Uh, absent, sorry. Delegation of Finland. Yes, delegation of France. Yes, with no rights. Delegation of Germany. Yes, no rights. Delegation of India. Yes, with no rights. Delegation of Indonesia. Yes. Delegation of Iran. Uh, excuse me, Honorable Chair, uh, I was uh, offline due to a problem. Can you please uh, explain uh, which uh, draft resolution is this one? This one is the draft resolution number 2.1 from Italy, Japan and Chile regarding sustainability information sharing and technology. Okay. Um, okay, then uh, no with no rights. Thank you. Delegation of Iran is voted. Delegation of Israel is absent. Delegation of Italy. Yes. Thank you. Delegation of Japan. Yes. Thank you. Oh, uh, just, yeah, the delegation of Israel is not present. Delegation of Korea. Yes, with no rights. Thank you. Delegation of Luxembourg. Yes, with no rights. Thank you. Delegation of Mexico. Yes, with no rights. The Netherlands. Yes. Thank you. Delegation of Nigeria. No, with no rights. Thank you. Delegation of Russia. No, with no rights. Delegation of South Africa, which is absent, followed by the delegation of the United Arab Emirates. Um, sorry, yes. Um, Thank you. Yes. Delegation of the United Kingdom. Yes, with no rights. Thank you. Had one of Ukraine. Yes. The one of the United States of America. Yes. And the one of Venezuela. Abstain. Have you inserted present and voting at the beginning of the, of the roll call? Sorry? Have you answered present and voting in the beginning of the session? Yes. If, if so, you are forced to vote either yes or no. Okay. Sorry, these, these are the details of the procedure, um, but you, you do have to vote yes or no. No. With Thank, no you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so Sarah? considering... Yes. Mr. Chair, uh, the delegation of India would like to request if there a possibility, is there a possibility to change the word because the delegation of India might have misunderstood this uh, res draft resolution as some other draft resolution. Is there a possibility to change their vote from yes to yes with no, no rights to no with no rights? Uh, yes, it is possible. It is possible. It's considered possible. Anyhow, this draft resolution do not pass considering six countries have voted against. In order, however, to ease and um, fasten the process for the next resolutions, I would proceed with an objection uh, process and ask if uh, any delegations would like to vote against a draft resolution so that we move forward faster uh, on draft resolution number 3.1, which is the one from Germany, Luxembourg, and Australia, as well as Finland. 
regarding a legal framework. And I will then propose that each delegation, uh, like that the delegations that would like to vote against this draft resolution raise their hands. Thank you. Um, point of information to the chair. Yes, um, delegation of Luxembourg. Due to the introduction of a friendly amendment, which was not complete and has been pushed forward again by uh, the Chinese delegation, this delegation would like to ask if it can be again modified and passed as a friendly amendment, which all delegations, if I am not mistaken, agree upon. Um, because in, in that case, uh, the delegations of China, India, Russia, and Belgium would all four of them agree to our resolution? Which, uh, so the considered amendment only includes the uh, inclusion of five no, organs to the considered amendment. Is that Absolutely. correct? Absolutely. And the five organs have been listed out by the delegation of China via the chat box here on Zoom. Okay. Considering the current committee is reunited in order to pass uh, amendment, uh, to pass resolutions in order to build a legal framework for our space resources, uh, the Secretariat is open to uh, ease the process and thus consider it written and accepted as friendly by the three sponsors, should there not be any objections from the three corresponding sponsors. No objections. No objection. Thank you very much. In that Thank case, it is considered included. And if there are any uh, countries against this draft resolution, please raise your hand. Yes, Venezuela. Any other countries against? Thank you very Final much. Any information to the chair? Yes, delegation of Luxembourg. Could the sponsors be granted a minute or two of explanation of what this draft resolution is? Because we had we had reached consensus in the unmoderated caucus in Gather Town. Yes, unfortunately, um, if you had not considered the possibility that this country before could vote against, uh, I cannot do anything right now, considering the vote is already proceeding. And we do not hold the time uh, to, to do so because uh, the closing ceremony is in 25 minutes, unfortunately, and we still have three resolutions to vote for. Uh, I am to the regret to inform all the delegations that the work will have to continue regarding the adoption of such resolution in further uh, committee. Thank you and sorry. Uh, so the draft resolution number 3.1 is not does not pass, unfortunately, due to a vote against from Venezuela. Uh, draft resolution number 4.1. Uh, presented by France, the United Arab Emirates, and the USA regarding an international temporary utilization zones. Uh, are there any countries against this draft resolution? If so, please raise your hand. Uh, delegation of Venezuela against, again, as well as China. Oh. India. The Russian Federation. And uh, uh, Mrs. Kelteran, would, would you mind uh, changing your name or stating your country? Uh, Mrs. Samemir Kelteran, could you state your country, please? I do not, ah, thank you very much, Nigeria. Uh, so we do have five votes six votes with the delegation of Iran against this draft resolution, which thus do not pass. Um, and we will now proceed with delegation uh, draft resolution number 5.1, being the one of Finland, France, and Germany regarding protection, extraction, and recommendations on sustainable use of space resources. Are there any, uh, please, India and uh, uh, could you stop raising your hand for uh, this next draft resolution? Thank you. Are there any countries voting against this draft resolution? Thank you. Draft resolution number 5.1 thus directly passes. 
Uh, and moving forward with draft resolution number 6.1 from Belgium, China, India, and um, the Russian Federation regarding uh, the establishment of a binding international legal framework on the regulation of space resources operations. Are there any countries voting against that draft resolution? <laughs> Thank you. So we do have the United Arab Emirates, Luxembourg. Luxembourg, Japan, Italy. Japan, Italy. The United Kingdom. Finland. Followed by the USA the Republic of Chile, France, Germany, and Ukraine. Thank you very much, all delegations, for your precious time during this process voting. Uh, the Secretariat is happy of the delegations voted uh, that were accepted, at least, for the one that were not. It is unfortunate and uh, the Secretariat, Secretariat would like to advise all delegations to keep on uh, working the um, diplomatic process in order to reach an agreement potentially in, for, in future uh, committee sessions. Uh, I would like to thank all the delegations and would require, if possible, advise a country for um, a motion to adjourn the current committee. China opposes to this moderated uh, to this motion because China would like to ask if uh, a point of order could be made to revote on Luxembourg's and its allies draft resolution. Second. Uh, this is not acceptable as a, as a, it's not debatable as a point of order, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so I'm going to discard this current point. Uh, and yes, delegation of Finland. If you could make motion for uh, closing the debate. Thank you very much. Uh, the current session is, the, is thus finished. Uh, we do have 20 minutes of break before the closing ceremony. Uh, and I would advise for uh, uh, backstabbing in the gather town and not on the Zoom. Thank you very much. <laughs>